feel like my art and my music is the best way for me to show people that, hey, yo, I might be sad, but I'm still happy. You can be sad and still be happy. People are afraid to like be vulnerable with their stuff. And the stuff that you're most vulnerable with is the stuff that is really your greatest stuff. All my stuff, I feel like everybody can kind of relate to it because it's coming from like my heart. Hi, I'm Anna Michelle Morejon with Metro East Community Media here with Producers Corner Podcast, where we spotlight diverse voices and content creators in East Multnomah County and beyond. And today I'm talking with Day. The Day, also known as DeJore McKinley, is an alternative R&B artist from PDX Rockwood, known for his unique melodies, producing, live performance, and filmmaking skills. This Portland artist is looking to reach outside of the box when it comes to his art to not only inspire the youth, but his peers. The Day has also been nominated for several awards, Hometown Media Awards, Best of the Northwest, and more, for his music and video production. He has worked and released alongside major record labels such as Sony, Empire, No Limit, Motown, and more. This Northwest Air will soon be taking his place among the greatest to have ever made it in his hometown. So here is my conversation with DeJour, also known as The Day. So Day, tell me more about yourself. How did you get into music and also filmmaking? I got, I've always been like kind of into music since I was a kid. Um, I was like listening to like, you, I don't know if you guys know who he is, but his name's like Cisco. He had like blonde hair and stuff. He was really, he was really cool. Like I grew up on music like that and like, like 112 and them. So I would always listen to it. And my mom had this really cool, like, record player and so I would just always mess with it and so that's really how I like I just kind of like got into music because I was just I just loved music since I was a child so I was like you know what I really want to make stuff like this and um when it came to filming I was like once I was I was already in the music stuff so I was like okay I, I need to find people to shoot videos for me because there was other artists I was like yo you need a music video for this you know type of thing and I was like okay cool and so like the people that I was trying to work with just either didn't want to work with me or didn't see my vision for what I wanted to try to execute and so I was like you know what screw it I'm just gonna do it myself and um that's into that's like you know I was like looking around for places like rent cameras and stuff and that's actually how I found Metro East so it's like yeah and then like I guess the rest is kind of history I, that's actually that was my next question is how would you describe like your artistic style your vision whether for the music video or even just with your music I don't know, I guess emotional. I, I really like I, everything that I do, I put my emotions uh, in charge. And so if it doesn't feel right, then I'm not going to do it. Um, so um, that's really how, like, I would say very soulful. I feel like so many people do their art and try to do it in a smart way. And in a sense, it loses it its soul. All my stuff, I feel like everybody can kind of relate to it. Even if you don't, like, fully agree on what my vision is. I feel like even if you just hear or see what I'm doing, it's instantly relatable because it's coming from like my heart. Yeah. So that instance that you mentioned um, with the director, the camera person, maybe who didn't get your vision, or like what was that music video for? And what was your vision? I just want to know more. Oh man, it was so long ago. Um, I've, well, one, I could, I've, well, I could see why now, you know what I mean? Cause like, so like, Oh man, it has to be like this. You, know, you have to have the budget for this. But um, I just felt like my dreams were just too big for certain people, and it's like, um, like some some places I feel like I also didn't have the money to like put it all together, but I also had the drive to be like, no, I'll figure it out then if that's the case. Um, but I really wanted to do like a music video where like there's like a meteor shower and stuff, or like I'm standing on a car and it's like on fire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do stuff like that or like stuff like, um, like I, cause like I really want to make movies like Harry Potter mm -hmm. and I really love stuff like that. And I feel like that's the world I want to step into. And when I was younger, I just, I didn't really know what that took, you know? And so I feel like either people were like, oh, I'm not touching that. Or they're like, oh, you ain't got enough money. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So when you started learning to produce your own content, I know you produce your own music. 
Because mm-hmm. actually, when I first met you, you were in our recording studio and you were using Logic and mixing stuff. And I was like, this is beyond my comprehension. But in some ways, it looked similar to editing. So you do that and then you're creating content. So how how did you learn to use the tools that you do? YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. It's just clicking buttons, honestly. Yeah. YouTube is my best friend when it comes to anything. In that, that in uh, Google. Shout out Google. Thank you, Google. <laughs> so you're producing content. Do you also, what is, in film, what roles are you usually taking? Any role, honestly. I don't care what it is. I'll do anything. Do you have like, a favorite? I love being a camera operator. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I actually like that just because I'm like, I feel like I have like an eye for the composition. Mm-hmm. So like when it comes to if I have the freedom to be like, yo, hey, figure out a shot that will represent, you know, how big this person is. I'm instantly going to go for a hero shot because that's, you know what I mean? That's the that's what you want. Um, and I feel like I just kind of have a natural ability for that. I'm I could totally geek out on equipment right now. I'll try to keep this mm-hmm. to a minimum. But like what type of cameras have you filmed with and do you have a favorite? Man, I've used like the Black Magic here. I've used the Red camera. I've used the Ari. I was really happy about that one. Yeah, honestly. Ari Alexa, Amira. Uh, yes. I can't remember which one it was. I just remember that. Was it that tiny or like was it like beefy? It was a bigger one. Okay. It was a bigger yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I was just super Ari excited. Ari, anything is your yeah, solid. Yeah, I was like, quality. oh, geeking out and stuff. So that's <laughs> obviously my favorite one. But uh, I don't know if it's if it's not the Ari, it would most likely be the Black Magic, just because it's so accessible here. And so I've, I got to put more XP in with that camera and learn to appreciate it way more. And I'm like, man, this actually can do what everything else does, you know, but they're super slept on. So I, I think that's also why I like it um, probably the most if I can't get my hands in an Ari. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to know more about your experience with the BIPOC contractor program. I know mm-hmm. you're able to get some camera experience there. And for context for our viewers, our listeners, like our BIPOC contractor program is through Metro East production team. Um, we bring in members of our community who identify as BIPOC for production opportunities. You were part of that program. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear like about your experience and some of the things you learned. My, I feel like some uh, compared to the newer people that might've signed up, mine might've been a little bit different um, just because I was here um, a little while before that happened. And then also when I signed up, it was like right before COVID had hit. So like things kind of shut down and then like it was a little bit slower. But um, overall experience with the program was actually great just because I the, it gave me the, the again, I hate to use it, but I'm going to use it anyways, the XP to use, you know what I mean, to really get my hands on a camera again. You know, and, right. um, every, it was great working with everybody and like being able to make different connections with other people that I didn't even know had businesses in the community I'm living in, too. You know, so it was really great. Um, everybody's super helpful when it comes to like, yo, a hey, what do you what do you need to do? You don't need to do anything. OK, cool. Well, here can you tape down these cords? You know what I mean? Or not even honestly because when we started i feel like it's really just like everybody already knows their roles so if you don't then it's like what are you doing you know <laughs> but they're ever the communication is great when it comes to working with everybody um at least from my experience um but yeah yeah so, i think that yeah sorry, sorry yeah sorry, like sorry. in yeah. the program where you would you be on crew with other people in the bipoc program or was it just like okay i'm going out to this set and Jasmine, who is, we talked about this in our first episode, but Jasmine was also in the BIPOC contractor program. Were you guys in it together? No? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, guess I feel the, like we were, yeah. but. Is the question is like, could you and Jasmine have gone out together or were you like, you know, with other crew? I feel like it was kind of a, I feel like it was a rare moment for all of us at that time who were all signed up to be I feel like in one room because I feel like we were all like filling in the the spots you know what I mean where it's like and I don't think they wanted to overwhelm us as well because we're all new so I think they were strategically trying to um make sure that we were also getting a full experience on it you know what I mean without being like oh this person doesn't know what to do we're trying to get them here to learn so let's give them more time for us to like really you know what i mean key in on with them and like ask them questions and make sure that they're good 
All right, I'm going to do a pivot here. My question is, what is a project or achievement that you're most proud of? Me and Angela had did a music video um, for one of my songs off of my older album. And it ended up getting like 26,000 views on YouTube. Wow. I think that's probably one of my favorite just because that was a passion project of ours. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like a... Yo, we're uh, we're being paid to do this. You know what I mean? That came out of our pockets. It was our own personal time, so it felt more. Um, I had more passion for it in a sense. Not like saying I don't have passion for the stuff that we do here, but um, I'm not there when we're making the contracts. You know what I mean? I'm just like the person that is like, Yo, hey, are you available this time? We would love to have you. You know what I mean? And um, Besides, but like besides that, I would probably say when we did the Hometown Media Award, because that was also uh, something I was super passionate about as well, but that I didn't even know we were going to be doing, you know? <laughs> I was just like, oh, snap, like, we won? That's crazy. Like, what the heck? Um, yeah, I'll probably say those two projects. Yeah. I think you touched on something that I think about a lot, which is like in the film, I'm sure in music too, it's a career or a hobby or whatever it is for people. But well, actually, yeah, it is. It can be career, but it can also be hobby slash passion. There are things that you do for like maybe you're filming on a commercial set or you're filming for a construction show. Apparently I'm from Florida and there's a lot of like HGTV shows filming down there. Maybe that's not your passion. Maybe that's your career. You're showing up and you're doing the job. And then your passion would be kind of like your music video, right? Mm -hmm. So um so now I'm going to create a question on the spot is like, have what has been your encounter with like balancing of film as passion versus career video or media making, whatever have you? I separate my work from the outside work I take in. And I feel like no matter what, if if I'm taking on the work, I'm going to try and have some type of passion for it because I hate to let people down. I feel like that's probably one of my, like, I like, because I'm low-key a pessimist. So I'm, like, always overthinking and worrying about stuff I don't have to worry about. Um, so I try to separate my own personal things because I feel like those things I'm allowed to cry about, you know. I try to keep those two worlds separately, but they both are eventually going to the same end goal which is um, just me trying to make the best content possible. I would say the same thing though. It's like you, your stuff that's work, you have to find a way to enjoy it and be passionate about it in a way because like I always say, anything I do is has my name on it. And so that represents you. And so whether or not it's your biggest passion, you will find something you like about it yeah. to get through it. So yeah, that was so well put. Another question is, is there a challenge that you've had in your work that you've had to overcome? I just stopped caring about what I think about it and really just let the outside people, you know what I mean, like be the judge of it because I'm going to try to be over um, critical, I feel like, about my work and somebody else might be like, oh, this is amazing, or, like, get inspired by it. And if I'm just like, oh, this, you know what I mean, this is trash, like, you know, I'm saying that in front of them, and they're thinking, oh, man, this is the greatest stuff I've ever seen, that's going to downplay everything that I've done, and it's going to um, it's gonna make, it's going to just take away from their experience, you know, and I need to just not do that and just let them enjoy what I, what I, what I care about. And also, I feel like, just me kind of over, like, trying to be a perfectionist. I'm just, like, really killing my dream in a sense. Wow. Yeah. I, I feel that so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest obstacle sometimes can be ourselves, especially as artists and what you were saying, the way you described your music as, like, soulful. And it's like there's a vulnerability, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Um, With your music, like, what are... Like, what's your songwriting process? Are you into? Are you more into the, the music in the background, or are you very into the lyrics? I don't know much about the language, but like, what is the the story in your music? I like to talk about uh, 
things that like make me sad in this in a bad like it's the pessimism it's the pessimism <laughs> yo <laughs> and, um i feel like that's the realest version of me is when like because i feel like i'm like undercover sad all the time but like i'd hate to show people that because i don't want to make other, anybody else sad because I'm like, i mean that's life you know what i mean nobody wants to let people know you're sad and i feel like my art and my music is the best way for me to show people that hey yo i might be sad but i'm still okay you know, I'm still happy. You can be sad and still be happy. You know, people are afraid to like be vulnerable with their stuff. And the stuff that you're most vulnerable with is the stuff that is really your greatest stuff. Do you have like music community here, filmmaking community? What is it like here for you as a creative in Portland, Gresham? A lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, uh, but I feel like it's very crabs in a bucket here because i need you to explain what that means <laughs> it's everybody i feel like everybody wants to be on top but don't nobody want to support anybody and, and that doesn't happen a lot in like the filming because the filmmakers are like oh what camera you got was, oh i got this camera you know what i mean it's like, oh that's so dope let's do something you know and i don't you don't see that in the filming at least from me um because i'm an independent but like if it's like big studios yeah of course they're gonna beef with other big studios but i don't really see them tearing trying to tear those people down you know what i mean they're just like oh if you lose a contract i'll pick it up i don't care you know what i mean um but when with, with the music i feel like everybody just doesn't really care you know what i mean about what you're doing unless other people care about what you're doing and i really hate that part of it and hate is a strong word but it's true because i don't want I want people to re genuinely just care about what I'm doing and like really be a fan of the art. And I feel like too many artists out here are just like, in a sense, clout chasers, you know, where it's like, I just want to, I just want people to, like, there's so many artists that jumped into music because they think it's a quick check and they don't actually have a passion for the music or care about what they're doing or just, or just trying to follow a trend that everybody else is doing where that buries so many actual musicians that have been like, I've worked two years on this one song to put out and now I'm buried under all of this garbage because nobody believes that I'm an artist, which is why I stopped telling people I'm, I'm an artist. And I just tell them I'm a writer. Oh. And so when I show them my music, it's like, they're like, oh, okay, so you're an artist. When you say writer, do you mean like songwriter? Like, mm -hmm. like what, what would you say the differentiation is between writer and artist? And what would make you artist? I feel like an artist is like, I'm in the I'm front of the camera. I want to be in front of the camera. I don't want to have nothing to do with the logistics. I don't want to, I don't care about what it sounds like. I just want to be there. You know what I mean? I feel like that's like an artist nowadays where a writer is like, I create stories that people can follow. It's like, I'll write an entire novel and make somebody cry at the end of it because of it being so painful and um, just real and organic. And I feel like a lot of people are missing that. And that's why a lot of art and music now is just so overlooked because everybody's just like, oh, this is garbage. You know, they didn't really, I could tell you didn't really care about what you're saying here, you know? It's, it's a tough world, like in any industry for the independent. Um, you had me thinking about like Spotify and everything. I, I read headlines and then they're at the periphery of my brain and I don't remember them in full, but it, I'm sure that it's increasingly difficult for independent musicians on Spotify to be seen because of the algorithms, because of who they're recommending, and even make income through streaming. Um, I don't know if you've had, have you had any experience with that? Um, yes. Or thoughts there? The algorithm is weird, I feel like. I wasn't thinking about oh, I have to distribute it and I have to find a distributor. You know what I mean? I, w I never thought about that. I was just like, I'm just going to upload it. You know, it's like, oh, well, how do I get, how do I do that? You know, because I got a lot of people that was asking me like, yo, hey, when I first started, I first started at least, it was like, yo, are you on Spotify? And I was like, uh, what's Spotify? You know, <laughs> um, so I feel like that part of the music is where you, the artist has to become a label. You know, you have to become a person that's ready for the business or else you're just gonna kind of be oblivious to the entire thing and then you'll need people like managers and you'll need like record labels to help you do that type of thing. Um, so it's very tough. I feel like a lot of people 
um, nowadays though are trying to like catch up on it because it's like they the record labels need artists you know what i mean like we don't really need the record label we want the help but at, at the end of the day they really need us and i feel like a lot of people are forgetting that yeah they don't get a paycheck unless you do exactly exactly yeah. same with same with film um I know in your bio, you mentioned live performance. Mm -hmm. What, tell me about that. Um, I have a band. Oh, um, yeah. okay. Shout out uh, Dobak, shout out Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Sam on the bass. Um, yeah, and we've only been a band for like, I guess it's technically been a year now because we were doing band stuff last year. Um, but before that we were just just friends we were just all just friends just doing stuff and making great music uh my bassist sam uh he actually had me play bass for his band i think so you the also play bass year. yeah yeah, yeah. film sing play the bass yeah <laughs> <laughs> um he had me join his band because his bass player couldn't join his tour that he had me join and he was like man i gotta i gotta just figure this out and he asked me, he's like, yo, would you be down to play bass? And I was like, bro, I play piano. <laughs> and I don't even read music. I'll try. And we ended up just going in. And, and just from there, it was just like, man, okay, cool. I play bass for your band. You want to play bass for my band? He's like, yes. So it was really cool. Um, I love the band stuff, honestly. I feel like live performances really give it a whole thickness to it you know like it makes it feel like a concert and not just a show that i'm going to where there's like a, a show where it's just and that's not bad that's not bad you know what i mean people can do that and i just feel like you have to do 10 times the work to be interesting where it's a person with a mic and it's just like just standing there just like yeah uh what you talking about yeah you know what i mean and with a band, I'm like, there's so many different elements. And they just, I love to get the energy from them because I love to give the energy back and like the praise of like, yes, oh, I, this wouldn't have even sound as good if Dobak wasn't killing on the drums. And he has like a little rolling pad. It's like, me, 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 me. You know, it just <laughs> makes it so fun. It makes it really great. And I love that part. So have you ever done music videos for the band, either of the bands? No, not yet. That's actually, next. Sam, I think, is the only person that I've actually shot a music video for. I did, like, a rollout for my homie uh, Walker. But, uh, yeah, no, no. I haven't done any anything yet. Next on. Yet. And do you see a future, like, where you're doing live performances for the day for yourself? Uh, Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, um, I recently had got a licensing deal. And so Ooh. that's kind of uh, in the works now with us. Hopefully, I will be at Coachella next year. <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> For real? I hope so. I really <laughs> want to get in there. I've never been to Coachella, but if you get in, I will go. <laughs> but I'll make sure I have a pass and stuff yeah. for you. So, uh, is there anything else you want to share that I haven't asked? Uh, me and uh, my cousin, you guys know him as Jay, but Gigi Kimona. We are actually working on a collab project. And it's going to be like a three volume series kind of thing, which is going to be really cool. And we call it a GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really cool. I don't want to explain too much of it, but that's kind of what we're working towards right now. And Angela, she's going to be helping us film the short films for each volume. Nice. Yeah. So musical family and still keeping in touch with Metro East Live yeah. Hawk Contractor crew. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a taste of what's next. My last question is, how can people get in touch with you? Or, you know, if you do have a website, where can we listen to your music? Where are you at? Um, I'm on Instagram under uh, only uh, T-H-A underscore the day, basically. Um, and Spotify is just the day, Apple Music, the day, T-H-A. A lot of people get it confused because it's like T-H-E. It'll try to autocorrect it. Don't do it. <laughs> um, and then I have a website for my merchandise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's okay, something that. you probably want to talk about. Yeah. 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 I'm, uh, me and Gigi are actually doing a fashion show and we're doing exclusive pieces. We're going to have all the different designers from the community um, to come out and, you know, display their art. Um, actually, last year we did a fashion show and we only projected 50 people and we had 333 people come out that night. Where'd you host it? We did it at the Republic. It's like a place down in Chinatown. Cool. It was really freaking cool. It was so cool that they asked us to come back and make it a, like a recurring thing. 
And I was telling Gigi, I was like, oh, we should just pump the brakes, right? Like, oh, no, it was what they talk about, though. You know what I mean? Because we don't want to just say yes, and then we're helping them more than we're helping ourselves, you know? Because yeah. there's artists that's there, and we had musicians come out, too, that never even had a show, and they, we put them in front of so many people. And so I'm like, we got we got to make sure that if we're trying to go bigger, it's going to cost us more. And I want it to go bigger, you know, because we did it so cool and it was so compact. It just, I couldn't even breathe. It was so <laughs> like it was so irritating to deal with. But that's because like I'm like an introvert. So like trying to be out, like just like so exhausting. Wait, so when is that? Uh, the fashion show that mm -hmm. we're working on. It's going to be uh, summer, midsummer or like, early, that, like late spring. Thank you so much again, Dave, for being on the show with us. It was so cool to listen. I feel like I've learned so much about you. I mean, we only talked briefly, but it sounds like you've kind of, you're dipping into so many different creative areas, and I'm so excited to, like, see what's next for you. Um, again, my name is Anna Michelle Motohon with Producers Corner. The podcast is part of Metro East Community, Metro East Community Media, which is a nonprofit community media center in Gresham, Oregon, where we teach the public how to make their own media. Every episode is produced by an educational cohort who gain hands-on production experience in our on-site studios. You can follow at Metro East Media on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to give us a follow and a review if you enjoyed this podcast. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Is this the part where they're like talking and then it's like silent? You know, it does like that. Oh. Um, it might be silent, or we'll just have you asking that question, and then we'll sit here and drink water and fizzle out. Or and it's like, not actually saying anything, just moving your lips. <laughs>